In the next talk, you will look behind the scenes of an open source project, how decisions are made, how leadership works, and why it is so important. When she's not teaching agile principles at Zeitgeist, she's probably mapping out an underwater cave somewhere far, far away. Please welcome on stage Gina Steiner. Woo! Yeah, thank you very much, Toby. So, um, I think I have to adjust that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to talk about leadership. That's an in I don't like that so much. Um, and first, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. And uh, like Toby said, I'm doing um, Agile Change Management at Zeitgeist. Um, I'm doing open source since 2003. So I'm kind of a, maybe a kind of dinosaur. Uh, in addition, I'm director of the NEOS Foundation together with Toby and with Robert. We did that uh, beginning um, of last year. And um, I'm also a cave diver and explorer, which means um, like mapping caves and uh, underwater mines. This is one of my favorite um, things I do in my spare time. And um, a long time ago, I studied mathematics and uh, physics. So this is me as a person. So um, what is this going to be about? Well, about leadership, yes. And it's going to be about you, about everybody of you, um, because mainly it is um, you as a person, you have no problem to walk in one direction, for example. You um, are done, uh, 12 o'clock, head out for dinner, uh, for lunch, and uh, you just go somewhere and pick up something to eat. Pretty easy task. If you do that as a pair, that's still not a problem at all. Normally for me, this works like that. I work along the corridor, I find Wilhelm, I say, oh Wilhelm, what you're doing? I know he will go for the pizza guy, and we go there. So, works pretty well, and works well because we are two people and we establish one communication channel. I talk to Willem pretty easily, no problem here. So, okay, um, you might uh, think about what to do when you try to go for dinner with five people, maybe five girls maybe five guys, still works out. Still works out is a little bit more complicated for sure, because what here happens is um, you add another person. This person has to establish two communication channels to the already existing one. And um, if you add now another person, this person has to establish three communication channels. For five, it looks like that. Still possible. A little bit discussion, takes a little while. Oh no, maybe less carbons, maybe more this, I want to have a dessert, whatsoever. But in the end, you manage to work, to walk into the same direction. So now, if you have like 64 people, that's not that easy anymore. If you try to do that, it more or less ends up in such a situation. And um, yeah, why is that? Pretty obvious. You add another person, start to look like this. Next, you start to look like that. 11 looks like this. Not that easy anymore. Now you can think about what it's going to look like with 64. Okay, um, yeah, but we have uh, situations with uh, 64 people, even more. Solution, mainly, is um, we call for a leader. That's a normal situation, companies do that a lot of times. But um, a leader, 
often comes with another thing, which you might know pretty well and observe that. A leader comes with a bottleneck. So, okay, now this one person has to decide where to go for dinner or what. Uh, we might end up in a kind of micromanagement situation or something like that, which leads often to burnout or all these things, which we know pretty well. But we have a solution for that. You know that? We have a solution in companies, lots of companies use that. And this is the hierarchy. Sure. You reduce the communication channels. The CEO communicates to the leaders of uh, certain parts of the company and these communicate to the rest of the company. So, communication channels are reduced. There is another possibility to get the bottlenecks done. Has anybody has an idea what that could be? What you could call that? A sociocracy? Works maybe, you know that from families. Some um, political parties, political parties work like that. There is no one, no bottleneck who decides upon everything. It's more or less like your body functions. You have a brain, you have a heart, you have a lung. In fact, your lung is like two lungs. And um, it's not like if one of that stops, that all is done, maybe you end up in a weird situation somewhere in the hospital. They have to coordinate. If part of your lungs is removed, it still works out. And although you have a problem with your heart, you can get a kind of device which helps you. Although parts of your brain might uh, be removed also. Also things work out. So it's more like there are parts responsible for parts and they communicate in a good manner over hormones or whatsoever. And they are a kind of equal but non-equal, you know? Um, let's say um, my lung is a little bit more important maybe than my thyroid, or maybe not. So there are, they are equal but not equal, so this is the reason why I painted them in several colors. So um, what does this now have to do with an open source community? Better to say, what does this have to do with the NEOS community? Um, the difference between a company, main, the main difference between a company and a NEOS community, that companies, the people in companies, are often driven by extrinsic motivation. Or you try to put extrinsic motivation into that system. So you give them money for their work they do, or they get a title at some point, or a company car, something like that, a nicer bureau, nicer office, nicer gadgets, laptop, iPad, something like that. Um, we nowadays work a little bit more with intrinsic motivations, also in companies. But the NEOS community only works with intrinsic motivation. We do not pay you to do the things you do. You do it for other reasons. And um, we call that, uh, you do that because of your personal itch. You have an itch. 
something bugs you and you want to take care for that, you scratch that itch. It might be because you enter the community and think, oh, there is no documentation for the newbies. I want to take care for the documentation of the newbies. I recognize that this is really an itch and you have to take care for that. So everybody has his personal itch in our NEOS community and you cluster yourself around people who have the same kind of personal itch. So this is the really big difference between the company and the NEOS community. This is a personal itch. You are driven by the personal itch. Only intrinsic, intrinsic uh, motivation. So if this is the big difference, we can't put a carrot in front of the NEOS community member, you get more money. No, you don't get money at all. <laughs> An office, no, sorry. <laughs> no office. Um, we have another situation because now we really have to work on that intrinsic motivation. And then we have the intrinsic motivation together with that really, really complicated communication. And we know there might be an idea with that leader, but you know that leader can also only give you extrinsic motivation. So the solution is what? The solution is we call for leaders, but other kind of leaders. Who knows this guy? Does anybody know this guy? Nobody knows this guy. It's John Snow. So can you say, tell us something about John Snow? Who is this guy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, he's kind of handsome. And do you know, you say uh, from uh, when you watch the show, what kind of show is that? Game of Thrones. So this is Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. And he is, besides a very handsome guy, another kind of leader. So we look for other kind of leadership because of the intrinsic motivation. And um, mainly what we have to do, we have to put the leadership into the sheep and we are kind of sheep everybody. So this is the task we are looking for. Leadership in everybody of you. So we have to talk about you and your intrinsic motivation might lead that you are a kind of leader. Maybe it's like with the organs. Maybe you tend more to do that, maybe less. You will see that. But you have to have the tools. And if you have to do that, if in that group of people amongst the same personal itch and you just like turn out to be the one who just feels also to lead a little bit, you have to take care of certain things. Mainly there are four of them in my point of view, but what do I know? So the first thing for me it is you have to lead by example. It's pretty simple. You do something and you simply do that. And if you end up in a leading situation, the people look at you. And if you, should <laughs> if you just do stupid things, they will just do stupid things. So the point you end up in leading a little bit and you never know in a personal situation if you end up or not, you have to take care that the people look at you in our community. And so you have to lead by example. One really important thing from my point of view if you look at leading by example, is you will have tasks and you will get more tasks over the time. And um, at some point you have to recognize, you have to observe yourself and there might be too many tasks. And then you just have to let the task go and you have to communicate that. If you communicate that you might next three or four months don't have the time to do this or that, the people will uh, will observe you and they will do the same. So we will keep this, the, the system vital because we know the people who will do things and we know the people who don't, who don't have time because they have children, small, small children or stressed at the company or whatsoever. And everybody has to 
if you observe, okay, next three months I don't have time, just step back. Considerately, the people watch you and they will do the same. Um, we observed that in the community recently in a very, very, very wonderful way. Um, the second is, that's a sign from Freud, by the way. Um, it's um, authenticity. It's what has authenticity to do with that? It's more like you should know who you are and you should behave the way you really are. You should not try to look like this or look like that or to behave like this or behave like that, like you think the people want you to behave. Just behave the way you are. First, it feels much better for yourself. And second is, um, anyway, the people know who you are, kind of. They sus have suspicions. They, this person behaves like that, but mainly it's like that. But if you behave consistently, like we want to have the code in a consistent manner, we want to have the people in a consistent manner, because we know what they will do, and it's about trust, because everybody of you, if you know who you are and you behave the way you behave, everybody is totally clear in communication. I know how Yule works. I know when I talk to her, she will react like that. And when Yule talks to me, she will definitely know how I will react. Something she will not say to me because she knows pretty well. <coughs> yeah, don't do that with Gina. That won't work out. And the same way. So communication gets pretty easy the moment you are all authentic. That's pretty important in an open source community. It's about trust and reliability. So the third is um, just being yourself in the other person. That is a uh, kind of abstraction you have to do here. But uh, lots of us are coders, so we should be capable of that. So if you really think from your point of view it looks like that, it does not necessarily mean from the other point of view. It does not look totally different. So it is like that. You just have to remember that all the time and leaders, and since everybody's a leader, you have to remember the time. And not only that you know that it's another point of view. That's not only the, the most important thing. You also have it communicate in a little bit other manner. If you say, just because you are right, it does not mean I am wrong. You haven't seen life from my side. It's a little bit a different way of we normally would phrase it. Normally I would phrase maybe me as a person. So I am right, and I'm okay, maybe you are also right. We would we tend to, to formulate in that manner. And it's a little bit better to do that way. Because if you read that now, just because you are right, and I start the sentence like that, the first thing you hear, I am right. And from that point on, I am right. And then I say, uh, but maybe from my point of view it looks different. For you, that's a total, it is a totally another situation. My first sentence is you are right. This is important also if you think about putting yourself in a situation of somebody else. And the fourth is values. Yeah, well, values, values, digitalized world, whatever, we all talk about values. These are our news values. And uh, on neos.io you find um, digging in these four words from a different perspective. And it's not about words. The word is just the one thing, it's a stamp you put on it. But these words, humility, means a lot. And you have to think about what humility really means. And you have to stick to them. And what is responsibility? What does responsibility really mean? It means a different, lot of different things in different situations. It's, these are only four words. And everybody should simply read them and maybe check the website and just read what these people of this community see behind these words. Just read them, understand them. And then, for sure, it comes back to the first, which see, says, leading by example, because then you have to live these values. So, easy thing, four things, stick to them, everything's fine. And then, for sure, at some point, 
we have a lot of John Snow leaderships in our community, and then all is fine. Nope, not yet. We need clarity. And clarity is an interesting thing. In uh, German, we have a saying, uh, you don't see uh, the, the forest because of the trees. And mainly this is what clarity is about. Clarity is not that easy to achieve. And um, how do you manage to achieve clarity? Because this is one you really need as a leader, clarity. Because else you stand there, no oh, sheep, you have like you are one sheep and you are around other people with similar edges. Okay, and now I have the four things I can lead, but uh, okay, where? You need the clarity. So we have to think a little bit about clarity. And this is something uh, Stephen Perry says. That's uh, really interesting. We have these four things, like the purpose. This is our passion, and you have the vision. This is the world we wish to create. Within that, we have the strategy. This is how we will get there. And then we have the tactics, and the tactics will take care that we survive the journey. Um, often we are just taking care for the tactics. When you uh, attend a, a, a sprint, we are lots into tactics. How to do this exactly, how to do that exactly, and this exactly, and that exactly, and digging in. It's totally important to dig in, but if you start to dig in, you end up in the situation that you don't see the forest because of the trees. So the idea is first, you have to go from purpose, and then you boil it down to the tactics. So the things which you have to take care about is the purpose. And that's not an easy thing. I really like that um, uh, Robert um, put his finger onto the word purpose in his keynote, because it's exactly what you have to think about. The moment you know about your purpose, and you communicate that purpose properly, the leaderships within the group of personal itches will know where to head. Okay. Then you are able, with the four things and your clarity, to move the group in that direction. And then you have another problem. Because you get distracted from direction. That's interesting, but you get distracted from direction over and over. Although in the beginning you had that one direction, you will get distracted. Everybody knows that. Daily life and work, you will get distracted. Why is that? In groups, you have to think about autonomy. Autonomy is just that you this group decides him, her, itself, where to go. They are, autom to uh, they are autonomous on their decision. And the other thing is, is the alignment so that you really <laughs> head into one direction. These are two interesting words, and you had can, to th uh, can think about how these two alignment and autonomy interact. It's a little bit th theory stuff now, and they interact in this manner, you know? You are here now at the moment. Here's autonomy, so no autonomy, just to think about a little bit, and then you have the alignment. At the moment, no alignment. Best spot would be right here, total autonomy with total alignment. So, and um, you have to observe that. Where are we regarding these two axes? Because if you end up there, that's not an easy situation. It's almost impossible to go up there. Maybe we can think about situations or groups who have total autonomy and no alignment. Mm, we know such situations. And um, if we end up there, total alignment, total no autonomy, it's such a really bureaucratic situation. It's also almost impossible to uh, reach that happy spot. So, this is the way to go. Enhance autonomy, enhance alignment. We manage that pretty well in the NEOS community. It's like kind of our DNA. So this works pretty well in the NEOS community. And now what is this with this, this distraction? So we get distracted, what is that? This is about entropy. Has anybody an idea about entropy? You heard that, I think, in chemistry or physics or something like that, in school, back in school. So entropy is social, it's, it's, it's social entropy. 
sure the group um, is just not working out. It's a mess. But I refer to another entropy uh, because I studied mathematics and physics. That's um, a natural science. It's a measurement of disorder, I would call it. And you can just think about in the morning, you're coming to your desk, it is totally empty, all fine, everything is pretty in order. You do nothing except of working and then in the evening it's a mess. And on Friday it's a really big mess. So you do nothing, it just ends up with a mess. That's a natural science law, it's a law of science, it is like that. Things which are isolated systems, isolated systems, without doing anything, end up in a mess. It is like that. The moment you isolate a system, it will end up in a mess. You can't help it. It will be like that. So the interesting thing is, anyway, some desks are in order. Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Friday. So is this a person who has like a non-physic bubble around him or herself and natural science does not apply to this person? Sure, to this person natural science applies. The thing is, this person does something. And what does this person do? The person does not isolate the system. The person puts continuous energy into the system. Some put the energy on Friday evening <laughs> and fix the mess on Friday evening. And some people put in this energy continuously. You have to put in energy. Because if you apply now the entropy here, you just do nothing. You have to do nothing. And you will be kicked to the side. So, the only thing what you have to do is you have to observe it, to recognize it. First thing, observe it, recognize it. And then, fix it. That's it. It, it is... It, I, I, you do not care who observes it, who recognizes it, and who fixes it. It's not, that's not important. It has to be observed, it has to be recognized, and it has to be fixed. Best is the group itself recognizes, observes it, recognizes, and fixes it. If not, in companies, in my company in the beginning, I have observed, recognized, and <coughs> fixed it, or my boss did it. Nowadays, they do it themselves. This is what we do in our NEOS retrospectives, twice a year. It's pretty important, if you don't do that, you end up there. Maybe you know other open source communities who ended up there. We won't, because we know that. So, you will end up, hopefully, in that um, happy spot. And um, now we know all theory we have. And uh, from my really personal point of view, what you never, 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 ever should forget and miss is to have fun. This is pretty important. It's pretty important to have fun. And um, it is about you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gina. Are there any questions? Everything clear, perfectly aligned. Great, thanks very much.